The company are not trying to delay payment, Donald. They've simply asked if the men wouldn't prefer to have their wages paid directly to their home. Get let their wives at them first. You've got a big joker. It's the wives who are complaining. They say that stuck out here in the middle of nowhere, all the husbands do with their money is drink and gamble it away. Get, listen to Corbett. My boys may be a bunch of reprobates, but unless they get their wages in the middle of nowhere tomorrow, your pipeline stops in the middle of nowhere tomorrow. OK, the men will have their money. But I'll have your scalp if any of them sky off to York to spend it. I'd rather have you after me scalp than a hundred thirsty navvies after me hide. <laughs> Where are you up to anyway? Just past there. And don't say that's all. If your surveyor boys knew the difference between clay and granite, we... Him again. Sneaks in here with a few slices of stale bread. Sneaks out again with a load of our gear, I bet. Just decent plowmans, though. Made with his own fair hands, he says. Shudder to think. Anyway, he does most of his business with the boys on the site. He just pops in here to keep in nice with you. Uh, I thought you might like a nice bit of pheasant, Mr. Godfrey. Been poaching, Mr. Greengrouse? Poaching? It's illegal, isn't it? No, as a matter of fact, me, me dog found it. Yeah. After your gun shot it. Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I expect Daddy and Joe are lying on a beach soaking up the sun. Would you like a biscuit? Yes, please. Thank you. I bought all those summery things for when I was in France with Anton, huh? We spent the whole time huddled indoors because it was so wet. Oh, my word. Look. Look at this. It's got Katie written on it. Who do you think it's for? Me. <laughs> you open it, then. It's a card, too. To our two most favourite people in the whole world. We miss you. Love from... Who do you think it's from, then? Mm. Mm. Have a Christmas. The wages have to be paid on site tomorrow morning, as per usual, or the work stops. Yes, I did offer the alternative, and yes, I do know it's £6,000 we're talking about, but if you looked at a map, you'd see we're slap-bang in the middle of the Yorkshire Moors. Uh, what are you creeping around for? All right, Mr Corbett, I haven't forgotten you. Fixed you a nice couple of rabbits. Oh, don't tell me. Harrod sent them up in a hamper. No, I do not want them. Now, get out. Right, I'll, uh, I'll get off them. So that's it. That's the way we've done it for the past two months, and we're not going to change them now.
Hi, Riley. I hope I'm not bothering you. Oh, don't worry. Kate is out playing, so I'm enjoying a few minutes' freedom. Cup of tea. Please. I've uh, got a favour to ask. Oh, consider it done. You better hear what it is first. Will you run the pub for me tomorrow lunchtime? On my own? I suppose I can manage that. Thanks, Eileen. Got a lunch date, have you? Yep, with Claude Greengrass. How's he getting on with selling the sandwiches? Oh, you know Claude and money. Once it gets into his pocket, it finds it very hard to get out again. Yes, well, it must be competing with the dirt of centuries. Anyway, I'm sick of hearing how the hand was off, or Alfredette off the pasties. So I'm going to go out with him tomorrow, find out what he really takes in. Does he know? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I'm booking you. What for? Speeding. How can I be speeding? I'm parked at a petrol station. You must be doing more than 75 when you pass me. Was I really? Yes. Look, uh, sorry about the speeding, mate. It's too late for sorry, Sonny. Let's have your name. Mike Bradley. PC, Mike Bradley. What? I'm the new constable. You must be Sergeant Blaketon. Follow me, Bradley. And there's a 30 mile an hour speed limit in town. If you can manage that. <laughs> okay, then. Same time, same place. <laughs> Gotta go. Leave me, Sarge. Hi, <clears throat> Ventress. Follow me. This is P.C. Bradley. He's the gentleman from the Metropolitan Police we were expecting yesterday. He's been transferred to Ashfordley to learn all about community policing and to assist us in our unwearying fight against crime. Bradley, P.C. Ventris, P.C. Bellamy. Alf Ventris, how do you do? All right. Phil Bellamy. Social pleasantries aside, Ventress, you'll show Bradley the ropes, and you, Bellamy, will show him the nearest barber shop. I don't know what they get up to in the Met, but up here, we expect a copper to look like a copper. Not a roaring stone. So, this is Yorkshire, eh? Where the men are men and the sheep are nervous. And the uh, barber's shut at 5.30, so you'd better get your skates on. I'll show you the sights later. Sights? What sights? Well, I'll show you what your beat's going to be. Oh, all right. This beat wouldn't have to include any uh, pubs, now, would it? One or two, Phil. One or two. We'll have to check, see if they serve southerners. Come on, men. You roaring stone. There we are. Ten neat stitches. I'll give you a tetanus shot, just in case. Oh, come on now, Michael. Don't be such a baby. Thank you, Mr. Godfrey. That'll teach you to talk and work at the same time. There he is. Blathering away, picks up his spade and kaplonk, straight through his foot. He's to take a week off, Mr. Godfrey, and I mean a week. Give the wound time. Sure. Ah, sure, you've done a grand job there sewing him up. Yeah, thanks, Doc. Thanks for bringing us in. Do you want me to organise the lift back to the site? Oh, don't worry yourself. We'll just uh, have a wee drop or something somewhere. Wet our whistles and then get back to the camp. Come on in, Michael. They'll go and drink a pub dry. 
And Mike will be back at work first thing tomorrow, guarantee it. I'd have to take off his legs to get him to Mr. Day's wages. Speaking of whistles, you wouldn't like to wet yours, would you? No. You're the only person I know here, Maggie. Why don't you go and charm your way around some unsuspecting nurse? Well, they all treat me like I spent the last four years in a leper colony. I suppose I've got you to thank for that. I never even mentioned your name. You're a hard woman. I survived you, didn't I? How can you go out with 20 quid's worth of stuff, come back with everything sold? We're only 12 quid. Because you don't realise the sort of people I'm having to sell it to. Why? What's wrong with them? What's wrong with them? They, they want everything for nothing, don't they? I mean, they, they, they want to bargain all the time, and I'm the one that has to deal with it. Well, don't let them bargain. This is Yorkshire. The price is a price. Not as far as they're concerned. They won't have it. They will have it, cos I'm coming with you to show you how. What? Tomorrow, I'm coming with you. What, what, what about this place? Eileen's looking after it. It's not a place for a woman, you know, Jane. They're a right hard lot. So am I. Tomorrow, ten o'clock, OK? Hiya. What can I get you? Uh, two pints, your best, love. Nice. Hello, Oscar. What are you doing over this way? Well, I'm just doing the rounds as Nick's away. Thought I uh, might pop in for a chat. How nice. Do you fancy a sherry? Oh, thanks, Ivy. I must warn you, though, I've spent the whole week talking to a three-year-old. So if I start talking baby talk, don't be insulted. I'll try to overlook it. So, uh, are you coping all right without Nick, then? Oh, just about. we got a new boy from London. Seems like a nice lad, apart from his long hair and his motorbike. Policeman. They just keep getting younger. Aye. Reminds me of the time when Nick first arrived. Seems years ago now. There's been a lot of water under the bridge since then, Oscar. Aye. Well, cheers. Is something wrong? No, not really. Tell me. Well, I've had some bad news. Failed my medical. I've got to leave the police force. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm going for more tests tomorrow, see some sort of consultant. Is it definite that you have to leave? Hmm. It's definite. You think we'd learn, us old fogies, how to cope with change? I don't know how I'm going to cope, Eileen. You will. I know you will. Look at me. I'm thinking of moving to France for the rest of my life. Things happen. Change happens. We cope. He's a lucky man, your Frenchman. <laughs> good evening, Claude. What's good about it? Meet Mike Bradley. This is Claude Greengrass. Mike's our new policeman. I've been showing him around the area. Hello. Nice to meet you, Mr. Greengrass. Why? Well, he's polite for a copper, isn't he? Well, another little change after a fortnight with Blaketon. Uh, two pints, Gina. And a scotch. Uh, meet uh, Mike Bradley. Uh, he's our new copper. You'll be seeing him round Edensfield while Nick's away. That'll be nice. Married, are you? <laughs> no. No, I'm not. I don't know why they want any more coppers. I mean, uh, it won't be any trouble. It won't be your lot stirring things up. So, uh, what is it exactly you do, Mr. Uh, Greengrass? I'm 
I mean, catering at the moment. If it weren't for bossy landladies and nosy coppers, it'd be a lot easier. So this is your dog, isn't it? Oh, are you going to endorse his license? No, no. I like dogs. You've got to be careful getting his wrong side. He's a killer. Killer? Yeah, I can see. in the site office first, you know, to see the gaffer Corbett. Just him? Yeah, why? Seems like a waste of time. No, it wouldn't do to you, because you don't understand. You've got to keep him with the bosses. I mean, if I don't give him a few free sandwiches, there's no way he's going to let me sell them to the lads, is there? Ace the bloke from the pub last night. He must have broken down. I wonder where his bed is. Oi. Car's overheated. Can you give us a ride? Well, not really. We're not going anywhere. We're only going up the mall. Up the mall's is fine. Yeah, I know, but you, you want a garage, don't you? And it, it's back there. There's bound to be something going that way in a bit. I don't think so. This is a robbery. Friend? Was he sent up here, Alf? There's something a bit fishy about him. Maybe he wants a rest. Or do you think that every copper that leaves London is bent? I didn't say bent, I said fishy. Not well, bent, fishy. There's a distinction, is there? I mean, it doesn't seem like he wants to be here, does it? Well, he seemed very happy last night. Especially when he met young Gina. Oh, brilliant. He wasn't chatting her up, was he? Good morning, lads. Enjoy yourself last night. Yeah, a bit too much, I think. Ah, Bradley. So good of you to join us. I don't know what you're used to in London, but work here starts at the normal shift time. If that's all right with you. Yes, Sarge. Good. So, the first item. Payroll delivery to the site up on Boysdale Moor. It's pretty routine. But the site manager, Mr Corbett, has asked for a discreet presence. So I want visits up there, on the hour, every hour. Ventress, you can arrange the rotor. And any suspicious vehicles or people I want radioed in. Bradley? Can I use my bike, Sarge? To get up there. Is your bike fitted with a radio, Bradley? Then you know the answer. You can use Rowan's bike. And if I catch you anywhere near your own bike while you're on duty, the fastest thing you'll be riding is your chair. Right. I'll be back at one. Now, where are you going, Sarge? Well, in case we need you. If you needed to know, Ventress, you'd know. Yes, Sarge. that you're so interested in? Shut up. If you want to steal his truck, you must be mad. I said shut up! Someone's coming. Now follow it. And remember, we'll be right behind you. Sergeant Blakeland. Yes. I'm Dr. Bolton, senior registrar. Your consultant, Mr. Symes, has asked me to run the test for him. In case you're wondering where he is, he's off sick. Happens to even the great ones, I'm afraid. Yeah. The pulses are a bit irregular.
Mr. Symes has asked me to give you an ECG, that electrocardiogram, and a full set of chest X-rays. Is it that serious, then? Eh? At the moment, it looks like you've got arrhythmia. What does that mean? It means that the electrical conductivity of the heart isn't working properly. It's skipping a beat, that kind of thing. Now, it shouldn't be a problem, as long as you take it easy. Avoid any stress or strain. Anyway, we'll do the test now and have you back in a week for the results. You mean I've got to come back? Afraid so. Mr. Symes will want to go through the results with you himself. Anyway, if you just hang on a second, I'll check the x-ray room's ready. You stay there till they're done, okay? Who are you? I make the sandwiches. That's Pete Johnson, isn't it? That's right. How's it going, Mr. Corbett? Fine. Let's get the stuff in, shall we? It's nice out here, isn't it? Safe inside. Yes. Don't worry, Tell. Wait till they've gone. The safe won't be a problem. Thousand one hundred and forty. If you'll just sign there, Mr. Corbett, we'll be on our way. Thank you. Neil, what's Sergeant Blaketon doing here? Sergeant Blaketon. The policeman. You know very well who I mean. And you know very well that doctor-patient confidentiality means that I'm unable to tell you what, if anything, Sergeant Blaketon was doing here. How much longer do you intend staying here? I don't know. I'm getting to quite like the place. People are so friendly. You're impossible. God knows what I ever saw in you. Oh, God knows. A girl like you, I thought you'd have no trouble doing better. I was surprised to find you still on your own. I told you to wait. What do you want? What do you think? This? You idiot! I'll drink! I'm going to say. No. <laughs> you don't. I'll kill you. Then who'll open the safe? <laughs> don't do it to him, please. Alfred! Run! Yeah. I... 
<laughs> and I like dogs. All right, lads. You going up to the pipeline compound? Just been, mate. Oh. Everything all right? Sure. Good. Actually, uh, which way is it? A couple of miles back that way. Right at the post office, left of the traffic lights. Thanks very much. That's left of the traffic lights. <laughs> what traffic lights? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, lads. Come on. Which way is it? Two miles straight back. Can't miss it unless you're blind. Oh, stupid. Oh, from London, which amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks very much, lads. You've been very helpful. <laughs> Hello. Tell, move it. Someone's coming. Get in the front. Get in the front. Move it. Whoever it is, act natural. Remember, I'll be watching you. What about the food? What? Will we tell them? Tell them that's all we've got. You all right? What are you going to do about him then? Nothing, you're going to get rid of him. I'm going to be in there, and this is going to be pointing at you. Try anything, I'll use it. And, uh, in case you're wondering, I am a better shot than Terry. Hello there. I didn't know about all this. Meals on wheels. Very enterprising. I'll have a cheese roll, please. How much is that, then? It's free. Free? Thanks very much. PC my Bradley, Ashford the police. Just checking to see if everything's okay. So, uh, everything's okay, is it? Yes. I suppose you'll be taking the uh, wages down to the gangs later on. Do you want an escort? I'll manage. I suppose you will. Well, I'll be seeing you then.
Stop the engine. Let's go. Daft. Well, they're busy. Let's get out of here. Flame, you will shoot us. Not if we're not here, they won't. Come on. You're going somewhere, lovely. because I don't know. I've got to go back in a week for the results. All that and they told you nothing? Apparently, my electrical conductivity is not what it should be, as if I'm some sort of light bulb they can switch on and off. They'll have me in a wheelchair soon, I've no doubt. You're exaggerating. Look, I feel perfectly normal. I've got at least another ten good years in me and I'm, I'm being put out to grass. Everyone has to retire sooner or later. Ah, in my case, it's sooner. I've been a policeman for 25 years. I don't know what I'm going to do. Retire. Relax. All oh, right. And mold her away. Control, this is Delta Alpha 24. Come in. Control, this is Delta Alpha 24. Come in. Delta Alpha 24, this is Control. Go ahead, Mike. There's been a robbery at the compound. One casualty. I need an ambulance. Who needs an ambulance? Mr. Corbett, the site manager. Gunshot wounds. Get an ambulance to the pipeline compound. The thieves are the two hippies who were at the pub last night. The man's wearing a wig. They've got away with all the wages. It appears they're working with green grass. Working with who? Mike. Green grass. And Gina. Look, they use this truck. Bradley! Mike! Control, come in! Control! Hello? Delta Alpha 20, this is Control. Mike needs attention too. He says Greengrass is involved in the robbery. Greengrass won't try this sort of thing. Delta Alpha 20, this is Control. I can't raise Blaketon. Mike sounds very groggy. You better get up there fast. Right. What are you going to do? I'll go over his head. There's nothing else I can do. You best get off there now. Right. Uh, hello, Division. Oh, this is Ashford Lee Police Station. We've got an armed robbery in progress. Put your foot down, man! What's the point in trying to kill us all? Oh, I don't know, darling. What is the point? Here! Stop! Pull off to the left there. Here! Got a Land Rover around the back. <laughs> Why don't you do some travelling? Well, I've been to the Far East. I was there during the war. Why don't you go again? In peacetime? Aidensfield Arms. Oh, hello, Alf. No, Gina's not here. She's out with Greengrass. What? It's Alf Ventress. He says there's been a robbery up at the pipeline site. Gina and Greengrass are up there. Ventress, what's going on? Come on. Oh. 
Send an ambulance up to the compound pronto. And warn the hospital to expect some casualties. I've done that, Sarge. Right, good. Well, send Bellamy up to the site straight away. But you stay put. He's already on his way, Sarge. Right, good. Well, uh, contact division, inform them what's happened, and tell them that we might need some backup. I've done that too, Sarge. Oh, right. Good. Oh, what we haven't got, Sarge... This is a good description of the robbers. Bradley said they were in the Aidensfield Arms last night. Two hippies. Right, I'll handle that. And Ventris? Good work. Oh. Thank you very much, Sarge. Right, listen, everyone. Any of you that were in here last night, did you notice two hippies? Yeah. Can you describe them? Well, uh, they had long hair. I don't know about you. I'm going back to the compound to see if I can find Alfred. We've got to follow them! What are you talking about? You, you saw him shoot that bloke. I'm not giving him a chance of shooting me. We've got to get help then. Police, an ambulance. Come on! Get, get off, will you? You're a coward, Claude. Yes. I'll go on my own then. Don't talk, Daft. Hey, come, come here. Gina! Gina! Two adults, one male, one female, late twenties. They're dressed as hippies. The girl's got braided hair, and the man answers to the name of Dell or Tell or something. Have you got that? Yes, Sarge. I'll pass it on. Right, I'm on my way to the compound now. Keep me informed, Ventress. Out. Place taken. <clears throat> Maggie. Look, I'm sorry for what I said earlier. It was uncalled for. If you want me to leave, I can. Are the tables? My contract's for six months, but I know they wouldn't have any trouble filling it if I said I had to leave. You can do what you like. Maggie, please. We have to get over this. We work together here. We can't go on fighting. Who's fighting? I meant what I said, Neil. You can do what you like. You're not a factor in my life anymore. What's that? It's the cops. I thought you fixed the radio. I did. Relax. What are you doing? I said relax and get your head down. They're looking for two hippies in a fat guy's truck. Not one bloke in a rover. This is Delta Alpha 23. Control, this is Delta Alpha 23. There's Phil. Why is he blocking the road? I bet he's got hold of the wrong end of the stick as usual. I'll give you six to four, he thinks it's us that's done the robbery. Out! Move it! They're in the road! Where are they? I told you, in the rover. No, there was one man in the rover. Then one of them must have hid. They're in that car. They shot the bloke at the compound. They're on the 151, so they've got to turn onto the 169. I know a shortcut. They must have their brains removed when they become coppers. Hold on. Claude! 
Charles, what are you... Where are we going? Don't worry. I knew these roads before there were roads. Driving a green rover. Repeat, a green rover. Heading east on the B-151. Over. OK, Phil. D.I. Shiner, what's the situation? Uh, the robbery took place here. The thieves swapped cars round about here. PC Bellum is in pursuit. Sergeant Blaketon's approaching from here. We've lost contact with PC Bradley. OK, good work. We've checked your sergeant's descriptions with the flying squad. It's probable our thieves are Terry and Sharma Semple. Wage heist through his speciality. Warn your blokes not to get too close. He's already wanted for murder in the south. Alf, they've turned right onto the B-169. They're heading south. Any ideas where we're going? What? Yes. I only got here yesterday. This is Delta Alpha 20 to control. I'm on the B169, heading north. This is DI Shiner. Suspects are armed and highly dangerous. I've requested firearm support. Do not approach. Acknowledge? Acknowledged. Out. Shall we?
happened to Blaketon? Get an ambulance! Control, this is Delta Alpha 2 3. Control. Alf, we need an ambulance. The ambulance is on its way to the compound, Phil, to the gunshot wound. Get another, Alf. Blaketon's unconscious. I think he's had a heart attack. Okay, Phil, uh, we'll divert that ambulance to you and we'll send oh. another one to the compound. Now cancel that, Alf. Send them both here. I think our gunshot wound has arrived. Nurse. Nurse, there's been an incident on the moors. Five casualties, including one gunshot wound. ETA, 25 minutes. Get everyone ready. Bet you wish you were back in London, eh? No. I needed the rest. <laughs> Is Sergeant Blaketon still unconscious? Yes, but he's breathing steady. We'll have him in the hospital in about 20 minutes. Just make a note, it was me that saved you. Is, it, is he all right? Hey, don't die on me now after all that lot, Oscar. Oscar! 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 <laughs> 